If you have yet to use cannabinoids to help heal your dog or cat, you really should be considering them. There has been a ton of new studies coming out. There are literally thousands of veterinarians using cannabinoids right now to heal their patients. These same things can really help your pets. Are you looking to learn more about natural pet health and wellness? You've come to the right place. Click the link to subscribe to Veterinary Secrets. I recently just returned from a really impressive summit. It's called the Real Pet Summit. This was a summit on dog health and nutrition with a real key focus on feeding fresh raw food. But there was a number of very impressive speakers. I was fortunate to be invited. I was part of a guest panel. Yay. One of the speakers, Dr. Trina Hazat, she's a very respected veterinary oncologist. She's also president of the Veterinary Cannabis Society. She gave a big update as far as what is new in the use of cannabinoids in veterinary medicine. A whole plant cannabis extract such as this, it contains over 700 different components, like 700 different things. And the number of specific ingredients within cannabis that has medicinal properties is just something. First and foremost, we have the cannabinoids, right? We have CBD or cannabidiol. Right, we're attaching to certain receptors in the body, CB1, CB2 receptors. And clearly of all the different medicinal ingredients, that one is most important. It's got the most studies showing by far and away the most proven benefits. There's the second big most known one found in, you know, some of the other CBD or cannabis supplements such as this, this one here, 50% THC, 50% CBD. THC, it's the psychoactive portion of the cannabis plant. And the THC, it also has medicinal properties. There's many other cannabinoids, such as CBG, CBN, CBC. We have a cannabinoid blend that has many of those. But then there's a whole host of other things that offer clear medicinal benefits for our dogs and cats. There's an entire class of ingredients called terpenes. Terpenes, when you open the cannabis bottle, or you open a little bottle of our tincture, and you smell it, hmm, that smell, that comes from the terpenes. There are a number of terpenes, a whole number of different classes of these things called terpenes within the cannabis plant and in the cannabis oil. And they also have a bunch of different medicinal properties in terms of being antibacterial, antimicrobial, some are antiviral, even some have specific anti-cancer properties. And there must be 10 or 20 different terpenes found within the cannabis plant. There is one often also found in lemon, lemon essential oil called limonene. It's in this one here. There's another one called pinene. Yes, as you can guess. Also has some relation to pine trees. Those, they're all in here. And then on top of it, I was surprised to learn, like pleasantly surprised. There's also a whole host of these good medicinal plant ingredients called flavonoids. Things such as quercetin. This one here, quercetin, it also is in this. Cannabis oil, camphorol, apigenin. There's other specific cannabis only flavonoids. I think they're called caniflavins, also found in cannabis oil. The quercetin, for instance, we know it's been really effective for animals that have allergies, but also has great specific protective effects, may even be beneficial for aging. You can even target sentence and cells. And these are these sort of age cells that have yet to die, but that are responsible for chronic inflammation. So yeah, like hard to believe there is all that going on within the cannabis plant. And the really interesting thing for me was to see this come from a presentation from a board certified, this is a specialized veterinary oncologist who is practicing in LA, who sees so big benefits from using cannabis. You know, she's now president of the Veterinary Medical Cannabis Society. The top primary uses in veterinary medicine, well, number one, it's for anxiety and stress. We can take a cat here like old Cassian. It's not uncommon that our cats can have urinary tract disease. We know that single biggest thing that is, can be causing that is anxiety or stress. Treating your cat with an appropriate cannabinoid such as CBD can make a big difference. Tula, she's another great example. She has anxiety just being on the exam table. She is not super keen on being filmed. So I often, prior to filming her, I often give her CBD. Yes, 
What do you think of that little poodle? I'm going to give her a good 15 milligrams because that makes such a big difference. The second most important use what they're seeing in veterinary medicine is for pain and inflammation, right? Or animals having arth arthritic pain, for instance, or animals maybe have uh, a spinal injury of some type. Our dogs, they get ACL tears. Any animal with acute pain, you know, say our dogs with joint disorders, they're benefiting from cannabis. The only sort of approved use of cannabis in veterinary medicine, approved, is for epilepsy in our animals. And what we're seeing is that when we do at relatively high doses of CBD, in many cases, it's effective for that. For many of our animals that have allergies, like one of the big things with our animals that have allergies is that this whole serious inflammation going on. And seeing that CBD, especially when given an appropriate dose, can be a great anti-inflammatory. It's helping many of these allergic animals. And then what really interested me and what I learned more about was using um, medicinal cannabis for our animals that have cancer. And that they're using it in a whole array of different animals that have a whole array of different types of cancers. And for the majority of time, cannabis is proven to be so helpful. My last dog, Lewis, this black lab cross, he had this pretty invasive uh, oral mouth cancer, kind of invaded up the back of his mouth, was it hitting in towards the back of his eye? Unfortunately, it couldn't all be removed via surgery and it was really sort of palliative care. And with him, he responded not well to fentanyl. We put a fentanyl patch on him. I have a pretty strong oral anti-inflammatory. Those two in combination were not giving him adequate pain relief. But what did work was a combination of THC, CBD. I actually used something like this. I got them up to a 50-50 blend. And that gave him some really wonderful pain relief to the point where he was walking around, walking on the trail. It was great for palliative care. So yes, they're seeing clear benefits. Number one, just for palliative care. The second big benefit is they're seeing it be effective for many, many cases of our animals that have cancer. And there's a couple of specific conditions that she referenced. The biggest one, which I was really excited to hear about, was about mast cell tumors. So they're finding that some of these tumors respond really well to CBD. What they find is there's a whole array of different receptors in our pet's body. CB1 and CB2 receptors. So the CBD, it'll bind to these receptors all throughout our pet's body. And when that happens, Number one, it makes the immune system far more effective. It's able to better target those cancer cells. And number two, it activates a number of different cellular processes within the body that have it then specifically go after disease happening within the body itself. Because some of what happens in cancer is number one, the, the cancers, they grow new blood vessels, right? It's called angiogenesis. If you can block that, you can decrease cancer cell spread. Or number two, they're able to hide or shield themselves away from the immune system. And in some cases, some of these cannabinoids can then allow the immune system to recognize those cancer cells and actually go after them. So it's sort of working with the body as opposed to being, you know, acting like a chemotherapeutic drug. And then if you're able to incorporate THC, so in some cases, the THC in where some of the cancers, it'll actually bind to some of those cancers if those cancers have THC receptors. And that is specifically targeting the cancer cell right at the base. What I was also pleased to hear is just how safe it is. And it's something that I've discussed in this channel. You know, but to hear a board certified veterinarian say the same thing is like, okay, I know I'm telling you guys the right thing. So number one, they say in virtually every health condition, you can safely use CBD, you can safely use CBD. THC and some of the other cannabinoids. The only time they would consider avoid using it. Well, number one, in serious, if possibly serious advanced heart disease, where we're worried about blood pressure. So that's one instance, but only in serious advanced heart, heart disease. And the only other time you would consider not using it is if we have an animal that is in acute liver failure. But if there's just elevated liver enzymes, such as Tula has, or she's had elevated ALT, in fact, he said most of the time it's probably beneficial. It's going to decrease inflammation, perhaps moderate the immune system where it may be attacking some of those specific parts of the liver, causing that elevated liver enzyme. Except for those two conditions, acute heart failure, right? We're worried about blood pressure changes. 
you know, acute liver failure, use cannabis. Then what about drug interactions, right? Can it not interact with some of these other drugs? You know, I've had uh, many pet parents say their vet said, oh, don't use that CBD or don't use that product there because it can interact with the anti-inflammatory drug my dog is on. Turns out that's not the case. And there's considered very few to no drug interactions, especially when CBD, CBD THC is given at the appropriate dose. Few to none. You know, when, so when I look at the range of different veterinary medications and treatments we have out there, to have a holistic product such as these, which can be so beneficial, cover so many different uh, diseases and health conditions, and, you know, not have virtually no drug interactions, I'm like, okay, that's why you have someone who's a veterinary oncologist who is lecturing on the benefits of cannabis and veterinary medicine. She did say in her dogs, and some dogs when they're on CBD, we can see an increase in an enzyme called ALP, right? That is an enzyme that is produced from the liver. Turns out it's also produced from the bone. So what CBD does is actually increases ALP production within the bone. That's actually a good thing because it actually means say there's like, it can either regenerate new bone growth. There's like, if there is bone damage, for instance. The one little caveat and caution, she did say that sometimes in cats, aka little Cassie in here, he's on CBD for a bit. You can see an elevation in this one lambda enzyme called ALT, but obviously you're gonna be doing this in conjunction, say with your veterinarian, say you're treating a cat that has cancer. If there's a mild elevation in ALT, you can sort of just adjust the dose, marked increase, maybe then like CBD or some of the medicinal cannabis isn't appropriate. But as she said, for majority of the time, that is not the case, right? You look at all these different health conditions, all these different veterinary treatment options, CBD, CBD, THC, some of the other cannabinoids, they are so much better with virtually no side effects, no exclusions. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the specific doses and some of the doses that are being suggested for cancer. Well, number one, look at CBD. Um, for instance, our ultimate CBD product, we have three milligrams per drop. The suggested starting dose for many of the veterinary conditions is one make per kilo, which would mean a five kilo or 10 pound animal would get about five milligrams, right? Uh, this here is sort of three milligrams per drop. So that would be sort of two drops for your average cat a day. But then she talked about what happens if you've got an animal which has cancers or say an animal that has pretty unresponsive epilepsy, you can markedly increase the dose. And they have many of these animals on these high therapeutic doses of 15 milligrams per kilo. So for an animal that weighs about five kilos, uh, a little over 10 pounds of which Cassian is, they could get upwards of 75 milligrams. You don't just go from one up to 75, but I think what's happened is you start at a lower dose, slowly increase the amount, um, seeing if your animal is responding uh, to those lower doses, if they're not, then the doses get increased. But 75 milligrams of the CBD oil here, that would be 25 drops. So if they're doing upwards of that doses for, the, for many of our dogs and cats with some of the serious cancers. And the big thing is that they're responding. She did talk about incorporating THC. It can be great as an appetite stimulant, especially with our animals that have cancer and they're feeling nauseous and sick. To get them to eat is great. But she did say you don't sort of markedly increase the THC dose. You go for a maximum amount of somewhere between 30 to 60 milligrams total of THC. A couple of other last key points. She said to increase absorption, give it with food or fat right? Fat especially can increase absorption. What do you think of that little poodle? Mm -hmm. Chicken soaked CBD is actually cannabinoid blend. Cool. Yummy. That's an easy way to get it. And her sort of one of her final concluding points is really make a big focus on ensuring that you're getting a quality cannabinoid product. So one where you can get a certificate of analysis of which we have one ideally that has a veterinary stamp of approval. Oh, ours is a veterinary stamp of approval. But most importantly, you want to make sure you're avoiding any of the serious toxins, right? Because some of the people to extract the CBD, they're using some of these noxious chemicals, right? Some of these solvents, clearly not in our product. And then some of them may be contaminated with lead phthalates. Ours is a 100% tested, guaranteed, pure product. And because of that, I'm really happy and confident to suggest 
that if you're open to trying a CBD or a CBD cannabinoid blend for your dog or cat, consider ours. But the last thing I want to leave you guys with, if you ever have a dog or cat that ever happens to get cancer, first and foremost, consider a whole plant extract, cannabinoid blend and or CBD. Here's our CBD as a whole plant extract. Here's our cannabinoid blend, which includes CBD, some of the other cannabinoids in a whole plant extract. Cause you want those specific cannabinoids, but you also want, you want the terpenes, you want the flavonoids, all those different ingredients. They're in a whole plant extract. So first and foremost, consider that. Next, ensure it's a quality product. One where you can get a certificate of analysis, where you can be guaranteed that it's free of any toxins. And then third, you know, if your animal happens to have cancer, I mean, really point your veterinarian towards the Veterinary Cannabis Society. You can show them they have a big long review paper. I'm gonna put a link to that review paper in the description box. And just ensure that if they're using and if it's being used for your dog or cat, that they're getting up these up to these appropriate therapeutic doses. You know, if it needs to go up to 15 mg per kilo, so be it. It's such a better, better option than some of these really strong chemotherapeutic drugs. And that even they're able to use it topically. So some of these dogs that have mast cell tumors, say a mast cell tumor grade two where it hasn't spread elsewhere, you can use topical CBD. And they're finding that's enough in some cases to shrink those tumors, prevent them from coming back. So something can be used on an ongoing basis. So just point them towards that research. If they're using it, make sure it's an adequate dose and they're using it the correct way. So you're going to give it with food or fat. You're going to apply it topically if you can and use a high enough dose for it to be effective. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Energy Secrets of my update of medicinal cannabis for dogs and cats. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.